Okay, in this very short video we're going to look at uh, the concept of let potential, okay, and um, Ohm's law. Um, so we looked at last time the principle of charged objects attracting and repelling each other. We got the, the polythene rods, the acetate rods, and they charge the rod and found that two negatively charged rods would repel each other and opposite charges would attract each other. I want you to think now, in this situation, imagine we've got a charged rod and it's less, this one's free to move, but let's suppose it was just fixed for a second. We take another negative electron, an E minus, I'm just going to call it, this is a giant electron. This electron is repelled from a negatively charged object because of that opposite charge, opposite repel. If I wanted to move it and actually take it from a place in infinity, some miles away, physically move it, plonk it onto there, I've got to overcome that repulsion. And because I've got to overcome that repulsion, I've got to do some work. Basically, I've got to put energy into the system to move an electron from somewhere and plonk it onto there. So straight away, we can think, well, what is this build-up of charge? We basically define it as potential. And that's the key word here, okay? Potential. And you can define potential as being the work done required to move one cool charge, and in this case it's like an electron. Imagine we had a cooler of electrons, a unit of charge, and we moved it from infinity to a position there. The potential on this is equal to the work done moving one unit of charge. Okay? So we can say it's the work done per unit. But that to a lot of people still is a little bit a bit alien. It's a little bit, oh, I'm not really sure I get it. So what I like to think of it, or just at this stage to think of it as this. Think of it as an electrical pressure. Okay? Electrical pressure. Now if you think of electrical pressure, that makes a lot of sense. Things want to get away, but there's high pressure, things will move away, but there's low pressure, things will move from higher pressure to lower pressure. And if we consider this idea of potential, just for now, as electrical pressure, even though we know that it's, got, it's to do with energy, it's to do with the work of unit charge. If we think of it as electrical pressure, and we said, let's think about what's going on in a normal battery, a normal cell, a 1.5 volt cell. This for a second. We know that there's a potential difference across the cell. Now let's just say, on this battery, just for the sake of argument, this is a 1.5 volts to 1.5 volts cell, and therefore this side is at zero volts. So there's, there's a potential there of zero volts, electrical pressure, no pressure, and a potential there of 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts of pressure. And so these charges, okay, we've got a potential difference of 1.5 volts across here. These charges are going to go, going to want to go from where it's high potential to where it's low potential. Now. Forget about the fact that negative electrons actually go from one side to the other. Just think about for a minute. Imagine, if you will, positive charge flow because it makes it easy in your head. If we say this is all at high pressure, 1.5 volts, and this is all at zero pressure, zero volts, and I take this and I put something that can conduct these electrons or conduct these charges, like a lamp, set out of this, all of this side is maybe going to be connected up to the high, um, the high potential terminal. Okay, so all of this will instantly jump to 1.5 volts pressure. If you will. And we'll have a high pressure on this side, and we'll have zero pressure on this side, zero volts on this side, and so straight away we will get a potential difference across there. High pressure on one side, low pressure on the other side, and electrons or charges are going to want to jump across. Currents are going to want to be pushed across from high to low, and so we will get a current going on. We, there's a relationship here. The current I is equal to V divided by the resistance. So the higher the potential difference from one to the other, in this case 1.5 volts, the greater the current. And we know this the more bigger voltage batteries give us more current. Resistance, basically, we can define resistance as saying, well, what's the resistance? We can switch this over and say, oops, it's the ratio of the voltage to the current. That's really how we define resistance. Ratio of now, this, if we think 
about potential as pressure and get straight away in our head that it can't flow, it can't move through things, it can't go through things, it's going to go across things, then we're in a position now to start to understand basic circuits. So, here's our first setup. Potential, the potential difference across the cell is equal to the potential difference across a single component. Let's think about now what would happen if I shoved in here two lamps. Well, this is at high volt, high pressure. This is at zero pressure. If there's no pressure there, there's no pressure difference from there. there. Let's, let's say this is at zero volt, then there'd be no potential difference across there, so no current would want to flow from high to low pressure. But what happens is you've got high potential pressure there, and initially zero pressure there, and so some charge is going to jump through and push through and arrive in here. Some charge will build up in here, and so what will happen to the potential here? It will start to increase. As the potential, the potential in here increases, i.e. this electrical pressure increases, then we'll have a potential difference from there to there, and charge will start to flow. And what happens is this basically builds up until we get an equilibrium. And you can see if these two are the same, this current flow this is going to be at sort of med middle pressure, medium pressure. That's high pressure, that's low pressure, this is going to arrive at middle pressure. And let's say this is going to be 0.75 volts potential, 0.75 volts of pressure. So now we can say, well, the potential difference across both of these, that's at 1.5 volts, that's at 0 volts, so the potential difference across both is still 1.5 volts. But if we look at the potential difference across this one, well, it's going from 1.5 volts to 0.75 volts. So the PD, the potential difference, is 0.75 there. The potential difference across that is also 0.75 volts. And so, fundamentally, we've got to think about potential as really what it is. Electrical pressure and it's shared out across components in series. All right? So we can now think, I'll give you a second, what would be the potential difference if I put three series? Hopefully, you would come to the conclusion yourself that that would be 0.5 volts across there, 0.5 volts across there, and 0.5 volts across there. Because the total PD adds up to the PD. Okay, so we'd have that would be a 1.5 volt potential. This would now be a 1 volt potential, so a 0.5 volt difference. This is 1 volt potential. This is at 0.5 volt potential, so the difference is 1.5 volts. This is at 0.5 volt potential. This is at 0 volt potential, so there's a difference of 0.5 volts. And that is really how we apply electrical tension to um, components in uh, series.